preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guide His children. In His arms, He'll carry them all day long. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him ever in joyful song. Good evening, online viewers. I warmly welcome you back to our Sunday evening service. The past few Sundays, you were enlightened by our dear pastor, Andy Manzano, with a series of interesting topics, and I hope you were blessed by each one of them. And this evening, we are back with our regular program and i'm so happy to be here with you so that we can worship the lord together in the beauty of holiness this evening we will be looking at the team under whose directive you are under whose directive you are yes very interesting topic this evening so i encourage you to like and share the page so that others can be blessed by this evening's program but before we move on let's all put ourselves in the manner for prayer as we ask god's guidance for this evening's program dear heavenly father we thank you so much for the breath of life we want to thank you for all your blessings. As we come before you, we ask that you please forgive us from all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we just want to lift up this evening's program to you. We pray that you will be with each online viewer. Cover them with your blood, Lord Jesus, and help them so that they can learn something about you this evening. Open their hearts to receive your message. Continue to provide, guide and protect them. Beat back the forces of darkness and have your way in their lives. Touch them at this time, Lord Jesus. Take charge and control. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. Yes, online viewers, it is now time to join with our choristers as they lead out in a song service. So let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Our first hymn is hymn number 286, Wonderful Words of Life. Words of life. 
another hymn is hymn number 272. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, 272.
And our final hymn is hymn number 212. 212, it is almost time for the Lord to come. Christus for such a wonderful song service. God's name be praised. At this time, Pastor Bernard Lyons will now intercede on our behalf. Let's put ourselves in a manner for prayer. I invite you at this time to bow your heads with me as we go into a moment of prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy most holy name. We, your children, bow before you at this time, recognizing your awesomeness, your goodness, your greatness, your beauty, and your magnificence in our lives. Nothing good have we done to deserve this privilege and this unique honor, but simply because of your love, we can bow in your presence and we can say thank you. As we look back at our lives and our experiences, we know it was not our strength and our power that brought us through, but it was your power, it was your grace, and it was your mercy that kept us going and carried us in our moments of weakness. Today, we ask for your forgiveness for your cleansing, for a new start. We ask that the blood of Jesus would wash our sins away and give us the strength to face a new day 
in righteousness and in holiness. We call upon your name, asking for your divine blessings to be upon our lives. For every day that we live, we know that we need you, and we need you even now more than we ever needed you before. And so we pray that through our trials, our tribulations, our distress, our nakedness, our weakness, that you, dear God, would avail yourself, show yourself real unto us, and overflow us with your blessings, that there would not be room enough to receive it. Today we pray for our church family, those who have surrendered their lives to you, those who are calling you their friend and savior from sin. Father, today, the family of God, we call upon your name. And we ask that you continue to help us that we would daily have that closer walk with Jesus Christ. We pray that daily we would have that devotional life where we connect with you. Where we remember that you are our creator, our redeemer, and our soon coming king. We pray that despite the trials that the devil would place upon us and the wiles of the enemy, that we would stand fast, we would stand firm and declare we are soldiers of Jesus Christ, marching on to the new Jerusalem, denouncing their God's sin and wickedness in all its forms. And continuing in the light of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh God, that you would mash up, destroy the stronghold of the enemy in our lives. And whatever the God we might be holding fast to that does not belong to you and your kingdom, we pray that you would give us the strength and the power to let go and to allow God to be the central theme and the driving force in our lives. We pray for our young people. Our young people that continue on the struggles and difficulties because the devil father is not giving them a chance. We pray for liberation. We pray for deliverance. We pray that they would get over that mountain and they would get through that valley. They would get through those dark moments and they would know that God is with them, that God is with us, with us wherever we may go. Whatever we are lacking today, Lord, we pray that you will supply. We even pray for our nation, Grenada, Karaku, and Pitimatnik. As one people, as one nation, that we would unite together, that we would work together, that we would hold up each other's hand, and we would be there for each other so that our nation would not be a nation of division, but a nation united under Jesus Christ. We pray that God that you would bless the work within the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And as we labor, may we labor not unto self, but unto Christ. May our efforts bear fruit. And dear God, even by our fruit, by our lifestyle, may others come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Bless every department. Bless every worker. Bless every volunteer. And may we be committed to the task to give all for your cause and for your sake. This we pray in the wonderful, loving name of Jesus. Let the people of God say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Amen and Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Lyons. Online viewers, turn your Bibles with me to the book of Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 and that will be our scripture reading for this evening. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. Listen while I read. And if 
it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Good is the reading of God's word. And as we meditate on the reading this evening, our hearts will be blessed with a special message in a song. Shackled by your heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame Then the hands of Jesus touched me What a wonderful message in song this evening. I hope you were blessed. Online viewers, it is now time for the spoken word. Yes, I introduce to you a mighty man of God, a short but very powerful, and he attends the Hermitage SDA Church. Online viewers, I introduce to you Elder Henry Sargent, and tonight he will speak to us on the topic, Under Whose Directive You Are? Under Whose Directive You Are? Elder Sargent, I now turn over the time to you. 
Good evening, brothers and sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your servant, Ella Henry Sargent. And I'm here to present a message, uh, to share a message with you from God through his word this evening. And I trust it will be a blessing to all of you who are viewing and listening. Blessing and cursing, saved or lost, success or failure, eternal life or eternal death, heaven or hell, will determine under whose directive you are. And so brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the caption of that message this evening is under whose directive you are. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are going to give you praise, we are going to glorify and magnify your name that is worthy to be praised. We're going to give you thanks for your for so many blessings in life, but especially blessing of salvation, the blessing to have that relationship with you, the blessing of forgiveness and eternal life made possible through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whose name we come to you at this time and with the help of the Holy Spirit. Have mercy upon all, us all, we pray. Forgive us for our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we pray the Lord that the Holy Spirit will take charge of uh, this service here, this evening in a mark and mighty way. May it be a means of helping your people to have that relationship that you want us to have with you. And into thy hands I surrender myself to be used by the Holy Spirit. So take charge now we pray with thanksgiving. And through the forgiveness of our sins we ask. In Jesus name. Under whose directive you are. Let's go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verses 19 and 20. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verses 19 and 20. The Lord is speaking to us as his people, his children. He said, I have called heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Bear in mind the caption. Under whose directive you are. And that would mean whether we are blessed or cursed, we are saved or lost, we'll succeed or we'll have failure, we'll have eternal life or eternal death, we'll be in heaven one of these days with Jesus and all the saved and Save children of God and all the holy angels and the Father himself and the Holy Spirit. Or we may end up in hell with the devil and all the wicked and all those demons. But that will determine under whose directive we are. And so as we move on, in this study, in this message this evening, I'd like you to turn with me to Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. And we look at verses 14 and 15. And you know that Joshua was a mighty, dedicated and consecrated servant of God back there in those days. But you know those that he, he, he was leading 
They gave a lot of trouble back there. As a matter of fact, Israel gave God a lot of trouble. And this is what Joshua had to say to these folks back there. But I believe it's also applicable to us today. He said, now therefore, fear the Lord. Do you fear the Lord? Fear here does not mean to be afraid of God, as you know. It means to love God, to respect God, and to reverence God. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you might say today, we don't have any, any God made of wood or stone. Or birds are four-footed beasts. But do you know that anything we put before God becomes a common G.O.D. or an idol? As a matter of fact, you might be surprised to know that there are many idols today, many common G.O.D.S. in various forms. Your car can be that. Your child can be that. Your husband can be that. Your job can be that. Anything we cherish more than God becomes an idol or a common G.O.D. And so Joshua counseled the people back there. And he said in verse 15, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Watch that again. Where are the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood? Or the gods of the Amorites in whose land he dwell? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What do you say? But again, that, that determination is now under whose directive you are or whose directive we are. And we have a choice in the matter, as we realize. And remember, there are two masters striving. One is intended to do bad things to us. One is intended to destroy us all. But one is intended to do good things to us. And he is willing to save us all. And you know now, we are in the middle of that great controversy between good and evil. Between Christ and Satan. I know you're getting the picture. But, but you have to know where you are. In that great controversy between good and evil, between Christ and Satan, because there is no middle ground, there is no neutrality, you must consciously know where you are, under whose directive we are, under whose directive you are. Let's follow me to Judges chapter 14 and verse 1. We pick up a little story there. You know Samson was the strongest man that ever lived. But in chapter 14 of Judges and verse 1, we are told, And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And you know he wanted that woman for wife. And he actually commanded his parents to fetch her for him. You know and I know. That was already going contrary to the will of God for Samson. The little part I want us to look at from that first verse of that sentence. Chapter 1 
sorry, verse 1 of chapter 14, Judges, right? Judges 14, 1. Is, and Samson went down. Can some of you identify yourself here? You know, at one time, so many of us, we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We were happy. We were zealous. We wanted to do everything for God, to please Jesus. We wanted to witness. We were involved in whatever we can to the glory of God. But a change came. We switched direction. And instead of being under the directive of God, we, we ended up being under the directive of the enemy. You know about that? And we see something like that happening to Samson here. He was very successful when he had allowed God to be totally in control. By the way, in God's long suffering and mercy, you know, backsliding does not occur overnight, you know. Because while Samson was fooling around, he still was having success. But ultimately, he went down. Because you know what Delilah did to Samson? Because Samson now found himself under the wrong director. The one who wanted to finish him up. And in chapter 16, verse 21, let's look at that. When Delilah would have constantly pressing him to tell her the secret. After a while, he gave in. Samson went down. Because by then, he was not under the directive of God now. Who loved him and cared about him. He ended up under the directive of Satan there, if you please. Can we identify with that? Some of us? How we started with God and where we ended? What is our spiritual situation right now? From the time we were baptized to now. How are we doing? Under whose directive we are at this point in time? And so look at what sin does. Verse 21 tells us, when he was conquered now, when Delilah conquered him, and the, Phil and the Philistines captured him. Look at what verse 21 says. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with feathers of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Let us apply that spiritually. That is what sin does. When we change directors. When we leave the one who cares about us, who loves us with everlasting love. And turn to the one who wants to destroy us. So here we see sin blinds, it binds, and it grinds. Can somebody identify with that? But again, praise God for his mercy. His long suffering and forbearance with us. His goodness that leads us to repentance. It was not the ultimate destructive end in terms of salvation for Samson. Yes, he died with the Philistines. But remember, he repented there. He repented. And so there is hope.
for many of us today. Those of us who have gone down, those of us who, who found ourselves under a directive that will lead us to suffer, to experience unhappiness, distress, discomfort. I'm saying, like Samson, there is hope for you. There is hope for me. If we would humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and ask him for forgiveness, to pardon us, because you know God is not willing that any should perish, but also come to repentance. But what we are saying, if something had remained totally under the directive of Jehovah, he would, he would not have found himself where he found himself to lose his eyes, to grind, and to be bound by the uncircumcised Philistines. Under whose directive you are? Under whose directive I am at this time? As we go to John chapter 10 and verse 10. John 10, 10 makes it very clear about the purpose of the two directors. In John 10, 10, Jesus said, The thief which is that old devil, that old serpent, and Satan, cometh not, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But the next part of the text, which negates the first part, tells us, as Jesus said and is recorded here, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Praise Jesus. Under whose directive you are? Who is your director right now? Is it Satan or is it Jesus? If it's Satan, his intent is clear. Jesus made it abundantly clear here that the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. And in John 14, 6, you know it well. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, because Jesus is truth. You can have life and have it more abundantly in Christ, because Christ himself is life. And there is no other way apart from the way of Jesus Christ. That's the best way. Jesus Christ's way is the best way. Ladies and gentlemen, Brothers and sisters, our destination is determined based on under whose directive you are. Our final destination will be determined based on the choice you make, the choice I make, as to whether we want to be under the directive of Jesus Christ or we want to be under the directive of the devil. Remember, there is no neutrality and there is no middle, middle ground in this great controversy between Christ and Satan. It's either one or the other. And as we look at the trend today, many people prefer to choose the side of the enemy. Have a look of, of what is going on around you. Or stretch your mind overseas. And sad to say, the church is not exempted based on the choice we are making as church members also. 
Because you know we can be in the church and dressed up in the garments of Satan. You know that. As a matter of fact, my favorite writer said that the devil has sent people into the church. Why? To corrupt the church. But praise God, there are those who are led by the Spirit of God who are trying to promote and, you know, exalt the purity of the church. Foster the purity of the church. While some are there to cause disunity and corruption. So you see the church is not exempted. And the question is, under whose directive you are? Under whose directive am I? Under? And I'd like to take you with me to the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, to show you something there that may help us to understand under whose directive we are right at this point in time. Matthew 25. And a very important story there. Reading from verse uh, 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents. These are blessings eh? from the Lord. To another two. And to another one. Because we are not all the same in terms of abilities. God knows what you could carry and he knows what I could carry. To everyone according to his several ability. Yes. And straightway took his journey. But as we move to verse 90, we see something here. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. Now, to some people, it seems that Jesus is taking a long time to come back, but he will come. You see, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. And also remember, you and I will stand before his judgment seat to give an account of everything, whether it be good or bad. Verse 20, And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And what did the Lord say? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Again, that can be said based on under whose directive you are. If you are under the directive of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, bless your heart. Bless your heart. You will see something as we, you know, come to the end of this discourse, yeah. He also that received two talents, verse 22, came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me Two talents, behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. By the way, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Christ is coming again, and he's coming for faithful servants. Remember that. And we who are in church, we cannot say we are faithful to God and we are not faithful to his church. We should be doing everything in our part, those of us who are in church, to edify the church. To help the church grow in the knowledge and admonition of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have a responsibility. But 
for the one with the five talents and the one with the two talents who made use of those talents and invested those talents in the work of God, in the building of God's kingdom, in advancing the cause of God. Jesus said, well done. When Christ comes, can he hear the, will he hear the, well, will you hear the well done? Will I hear the well done? But hear that. But some people will be well done. Do you understand the difference? Some will hear well done. And some will be well done. Based on whose directive they were. Whose directed, directive rather they accepted. And so, hear that now. Then the, he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, how rude, how disrespectful to the master, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Rudeness, uh, disrespect to the master. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou artest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which had ten talents. Watch that. He didn't have anything. God gave him something to make use of it. He didn't make use of it. He is now taken away and given to the one who has ten. Verse 29. For unto everyone that heart shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Now see here. And finally, verse 30. Finally, in that session here, verse 30. In that, in that experience here. And cast it the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. And cast it the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, my dear brethren. Ladies and gentlemen. But that determines upon whose directive we are under. Under whose directive we are. And so our destination will be determined under whose directive we are. Whether we are under God or we are under Satan, the enemy of God. There are only two ways. By now we should know where we are. My friends, in verse 41 of chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25 verse 41. Watch that. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Depart from me, he cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now this text is showing us uh, that hell's fire was not made for man. But because human beings chose to be under the directive of the devil, they will end up in hell's fire. Is, is God making himself clear to us? Is the spirit of God making himself clear to us this afternoon? We are looking at the destination now. Based on whose directive we are under. Revelation chapter 6. What's something here? 14 to 17. Based on whose directive we find ourselves under. Whether it's on, under Jesus Christ or under the devil. And heaven departed as a scroll. Revelation 6 reading from verse 14. When it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth. And the great men. And the rich men. And the chief captains. And the mighty men. And every bond and every free man. Hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks. Fall on us. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb. For the day, for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? 
We see here, folks are running at the coming of Jesus Christ. But that is the result of under whose directive they place themselves. Brothers and sisters, you're always late. And we have to decide under whose directive we want to be. But unlike these folks running to the rocks and mountains, let's go with me to Isaiah 25 and verse 9. Isaiah 25 and verse 9. And see something very positive and wonderful there. Isaiah 25 and verse 9. And it shall be said in that day at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for those who have placed themselves under the directive of Jesus Christ. Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We'll be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So we see here, based on whose directive we place ourselves, who we have as our directors in his life, there'll be two consequences here. Or there'll be two results. One would be an eternal punishment, an eternal death. And the other would be eternal everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, I trust that God is making himself very clear to us as we listen to this message this evening. When we read Revelation 6, 14 to 17, the question was asked, and who shall be able to stand? But I want to assure you, as concerning those who will be able to stand, if we have washed our robes in the blood of the Lamb, we have been covered by his blood. We have been filled and sealed by the Holy Spirit. We will stand. You will stand by the grace of God. I will stand by the grace of God. But you see, the, the choice we make will determine our destination. Under whose directive you are at this point in time. Today, Jesus is calling to come under his directive. He's the one who died on the cross of Calvary. He's the one who gave his life as a ransom. He's the one who suffered tremendously under the hands of evil men and the devil and demons just to save you and to save me. Today you want to say, this evening you want to say, Lord Jesus, help me to be under your directive. If that is your desire, lift your hand. I cannot see you, but lift it for Jesus to see. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your children have listened. You have helped them to understand your word. You have helped us all to understand the, between the two ways, the evil and the good, the righteous and the unrighteous, between the two masters, Christ and Satan. And your people are indicating that they would want to be under the direction of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you would strengthen them. You would comfort. You would console them. You would lead them to the experience they need with you at this time. And grant that we'll have that consecrated, dedicated, committed relationship with you and to be involved as faithful servants of the in a finished work and to live Christ-centered lives. Strengthen and keep guide direct. Bless your people. Those who have not yet surrendered to Christ, help that they will do so now as, as they listen to this message. Because human progression is fast closing and Jesus is coming again and we all must stand, not if, before the judgment seat of Christ. Thank you to know that you are willing to have everyone to be saved and none perish. Help our people to be clear about that and deliver them from the snares and the deceptions and the destructive objectives of the devil and those demons who only hellfire is made for, not for man, so that your people We'll be ready for the soon return of Christ. And we help us to stay ready. And this must is another favor we ask with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Elder Sergeant, for such a 
powerful message from God. Online viewers, I hope that you are blessed and I encourage you to share whatever you have learned here this evening so others can be blessed and gain a message as well. Him 281 says, I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? Online viewers, I just want to share this wonderful words of this song to you and I hope that it will be a blessing as you go through this week. Before I leave, I would like to share with you some announcements. Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Zoom ID 874-9040-961. Passcode 013803. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Remember Pastor's Corner on Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. and a rebroadcast will be at 8 p.m. Youth Life Unplug on Fridays at 7 p.m. and our Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m. followed by our Sabbath afternoon service at 4 p.m. And join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Mission Life Grenada as we continue our Sunday evening service let us pray dear heavenly father lord jesus we want to thank you so much for your message your word here this evening i pray that you will help each viewer you know to learn and to gain a message from whatever they have heard here and i pray that you will share it with others out there so that they can be drawn closer to you i pray that you will go forward and make a way as we go through this week i pray that you will guide and protect us provide for us and show us with your blessings and we thank you lord for the breath of life we thank you for everything that you have done for us continue to be with us as we go through the week lord take charge and control in your name i pray Amen. Have a wonderful week ahead, everyone, and may God bless you. We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips. My eyes have seen the King, I must tell all the world worship Him, we know the name.